Okay, so I'd like to say something about the error analysis in the Kirchhoff's Rules lab. And uh, I hope you've uh, done this lab uh, and are thinking about the analysis now, but maybe you can maybe view this before you've done the lab. That's okay, too. Uh, so we have, just to remind you, we have a circuit that looks like this. This is V1. This is R1, this is R3, this is R2, this is V2. And we have currents, currents I1 from all the way from here, all the way to here. That's I1. There's one branch, has one current. This is current I2 all the way from here, all the way up to there. That's I2. And this is current I3. And the goal of the game is to uh, calculate these currents using Kirchhoff's rules and also measure the currents using Ohm's law and compare them. Okay, so uh, if we apply Kirchhoff's junction rule here and then Kirchhoff's loop rules here and here, for instance, uh, we can uh, we can do the experiment and come up with some um, good results. I hope. Okay, so. Uh, Air analysis. Let's just stick to the air analysis. Uh, so we have to measure, to do this experiment, we need to know the measurements, the uncertainty, and the resistor values. And the resistor values, according to your little book here, is 1% plus 4D. Again, we know what that means. So this is 1% plus 4D. We also measure some voltages, so the voltage uncertainty turns out to be 0.8% plus or minus 5D. So we have slightly different uh, uncertainties here. So when you, use, when you use Kirchhoff's rules, you have five things that have error. You have V1 and V2, R1, R2, and R3. So you have five uncertainties. You've got three of these and two of those. If you're doing an error analysis, we've got... Uh, the uncertainty in R1 plus the uncertainty in R2 plus the uncertainty in R3 plus the uncertainty in V1 plus the uncertainty in V2. And these are, these, I mean, you just have to calculate each one of these separately because each one of these resistances and each one of these voltages is probably different. So this is going to mean something different depending upon what your voltage values are and what your resistance values are. For instance, if you have a 470 ohm resistor, uh, if we calculate the error, let's say it's let's say you measure it as 475 ohms, even though it might said might say 470 according to the color bands, but those are not really reliable. So 475 ohms. Okay. So 1% of 475 is uh, 4.75, right? Or we can call it five. Uh, that's easy to do. Now, 4D depends on uh, four of the four digits in the last significant figure. So, if your meter reads 475 and no other decimal points, uh, then we have uh, four digits in the last digit. So, four digits out of 475 ohms is about 0.8%. Uh, okay. So, the error in this the error in resistor 1 would be 1% plus 0.8%, which is 1.8%. Now, because the different resistors have different resistor values, and this number is always the same, you're going to get a slightly different percent for the resistance, uh, the error and the resistance for 1 and 2 and 3. So one might be 1.8%, one might be 1.6%, one might, one might be 2.0%. Who knows? Uh, but the 1% is always the same, but this fraction here is always going to be different depending on the resistor value. The smaller the resistor value, the bigger percentage four digits is in the last decimal point. And the same thing for voltage. The voltage is 0.8% plus 5D. 5 values in the last significant figure, that has to be changed into a, a percent. So you've got five terms here. Each term has two 
percentages, uh, a fixed percent, 1 or 0.8 percent, depending on whether it's resistor or voltage, plus the slightly variable percent you have to add on to that. Let's just, I'm making up some numbers. Let's say this is 2 percent, this is 1.8 percent, this is 1.6 percent, this is 1.4 percent, and this is 1.6 percent. So it's 8.4 percent total. So if you are doing Kirchhoff's rules in which you have five different things which have errors uh, and two kinds of errors with a digital meter, uh, I've come out with, I'm making this up, 8.4% total error. So that your answers for your currents are going to be off because the current, each current involves a calculation uh, uh, using those three equations, the Kirchhoff's rules equations, which contain all five of these Circuit, uh, circuit elements, R1, R2, R3, and V1 and V2 that you measure. So 8% error. So this is, um, this is a pretty big size error. Uh, and since you have five things here, uh, you, really, you really should use, uh, and I, I suspect you haven't used this before, but if you look on the back side of the propagation of error handout that, that I gave you, that we gave you, uh, the first week in lab last semester. Maybe you need a review on that. Uh, this is a bit, this, a bit of an overestimation of the error. So the error, the, the total percent error is given by the square root of the sum of the percents squared. That's called adding your errors in quadrature. And the reason for that is these are, these are all five of these are all independent errors. They're, they're all based on something different. Two batteries, three different resistors. And so uh, if you do this adding in quadrature, you get a smaller number than that. And I'm just predicting, I haven't calculated this, I'm predicting in this particular case, instead of 8%, it's going to come out more like 5%. This takes into account random errors. Some, some of these numbers are going to be too high. Some of these numbers are going to be too low. And that sort of averages out. It averages down the error from 8% to 4, 5%. I'm pretty confident you're going to get pretty close to 5% if you do 2 squared plus 1.8 squared plus 1.6 squared plus and so forth and take the square root of that. You're going to get uh, about 5% error, maybe 4%. So uh, use quadrature to figure out the error in the, uh, in the Kirchhoff's rules calculations because you've got five terms. And if you keep adding up these errors, they get pretty large. They get ridic ridiculously large. And you, that's kind of a way, way overestimate of the error. OK, now, so try that. See how it works. And also, in this experiment, we measure uh, I've asked you to measure with a voltmeter the voltage across uh, the resistor while, it, while the circuit's running. This is what I call V sub R1, the voltage across the resistor R1. And that's V sub R1 is given by, uh, 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 let's see, I1 times R1, right? That's what the meter should be reading. This is Ohm's law. And so uh, if you want to know the current I1, it's equal to V sub R1 over R1, the resistor, the resistor value. And so that has two terms that you measure. You measure, you measure this and you measure this. Uh, they have the errors that we talked about over here. And so your error here is due to, it's the error in V sub R1 plus the error in V sub, uh, in, in the error in R1 itself. And you can now add those in quadrature. That would be the error in V sub R1 squared plus the error in R1 squared. And that would be now, probably like this, but not quite so dramatically, reduce the overall error a little bit. And that would be appropriate because these are two independent quantities, and they should be measured in quadrature. Error should be measured in quadrature like that. So uh, again, if, that's, if, this is, uh, if this is 3% and that's 2%, square root of 3 squared plus 2 squared is the square root of 13, which is about 3, a little more than 3. So 3 plus 2 is 5, but the square root of 13 is like 3 and a half or something like that. And so uh, it reduces the overall error 
when you add in quadrature, when, you, when you're adding independent quantities such as each of these resistors and each of these voltage sources that you're reading. So uh, this clearly uh, is, in theory, a more accurate way to get the values of I1, I2, and I3 uh, by measuring the voltage across the resistors and just using Ohm's law to calculate the, uh, the current knowing the resistance. Uh, so uh, I would, for, for a super duper error analysis, I would calculate the error in quadrature of all these five terms that we talked about over there. And I also calculate the error in quadrature for using Ohm's law for these two terms that we calculated here. And that would give you your range. So if this is 5% and that's 3%, that means that your, this process and this process should give you answers that are well within 5 plus 3, 8% of each other. So uh, that's the way I'd do the error analysis on Kirchhoff's rules lab.